Kalacho. By your sweetest princess Zilka. Self silky smooth, Principessa Silkita, I'm generous and kind, full of wisdom and intelligence. And here I talk. What else you got up your sleeve, Principessa? <laughs> up my sleeve, you're funny. Like you don't know. No, we did not know about family constellation. That's correct. Never talked about it. What about matrix? Matrix energetics. I can't talk to you about it. Okay, I can talk a little bit, but I cannot explain it to you. It's too complicated. But let me... Okay, family constellation. I don't know. I think you could reenact it. It's about the vision with a few people. And psyche you can do. But matrix, I don't think so. It's too complicated. But Matrix Energetics works, works with frequencies. It works with healing, it works with kinesiology, and also with surrogation. So you can make it straightforward with a person, and you can also make it with a doll. But you have to make statements and declare that this is what it is, and you have to ask on the higher level of permission that you're allowed to do such a thing. That it is in the, in the interest of, um, yeah, in the interest of the person you are surrogating for and who you're healing with. Yeah, your purpose is always in the interest of the people. That is a higher purpose, not a lower purpose. So for starters, is to start working. You have to be a healer in a way. So you have to kind of look what needs to be done. That's a good one. Where to go, what to address. And then you have to intuit, I have to connect yourself to the field, which frequency you need. I think they have names too, but they also have numbers. Bartlett had like 21 frequencies and he would work with those, he would bring them in. Uh, no, he did that for people in st on stage. He would bring people, okay, so first he would go, he had very large audiences, uh, hundreds of people. I went for the first time in summer to San Diego and that is entire weekend and uh, Friday is like the evening. Uh, you are welcome. They welcome people and anybody can go. Like I went and I brought Yaiki, I think the kids too. Uh, for two hours or so. Yeah, of course I brought the kids because the kids were there. And then I continued the seminar for Saturday and Sunday learning so what he does is he he takes anybody from the audience he says his guides tell him who i do believe it this is not hocus pocus this is not that you know this is not not a las vegas show because i have seen and experimented a lot of things so he walks to the audience. Uh, you can see his eyes, he's searching. And his guy is talking to him, I guess, in telepathy. No, I went to Matrix before Matria. But that is the year Matria came. A few months later. 
so he walks around the audience yeah not back and forth he just walks he just takes it's like he has to make choices am i going to go left or right you know the whole way through the audience and then he looks and then he feels into it and then his guides tell him where i believe it because i've seen you know stuff but my trail later came and did the same with me yeah the one example is like hilarious drive here drive there drive everywhere drive for two hours and then arrive to a point where i have never been before and then go into that place and not talk to that person and nobody else this one not the other ones and boom and i i told her the story and she started crying because that's exactly what just happened so i believe it i trust it too yes well because bartlett talked to me in telepathy later i think it's on film because everything is filmed in his seminars so he picks a person and i do not remember if they talked a lot or nothing because the guide bartlett in that case he doesn't have to ask what's happening he has to identify what is happening what part of the you know what is going on what had disrupted the flow of the chakras the energy the love whatever that is the life force and it's a great it's like a large vast amount of healing methods we can apply that's what we learn like a buffet of stuff and so he has to find out what he has to be using which tool and how to And yes, he can bring in frequencies. <laughs> it's very vague, I know it. On stage, people actually do fall when they're done. They collapse. That's why there's always like two people behind a person who's been worked with. You can see it online. Matrix energetics. There is a change. Something is liberated and that is a good thing. It can be tedious to do the healing because it can be a lot of things. Something with timelines and go back in time, but just do as a, as a vision, right? Maybe to connect the field back in time. You have to figure which one. I remember he was like attempting to do like, is it like the decade between this or the decade between that or between that and you can work your way through it it's, it's no work it's, that's what it is but it's so powerful it fits so great amelie that's a different amelie she came to my house with her husband too or was it her boyfriend or her just recently achieved husband now she was the healer too but he was not to my studio that was before my trail they came and we did sessions there it feels so powerful, I wanted to. I logged those sessions. Because I had to log them, but even, even, either way. I had to make a log of, of a lot of healing sessions in order to achieve to go, to be received as a healer. And that was for Seattle, that was later on. That was uh, half a year later. So I attended phone seminars i attended live seminars in in groups of matrix and i did my own so all that i had to log it's, i had to present a certain amount of of things it was like a large big book i printed it all out and i bound it it was binded but maybe what was special is that i brought in more, more frequencies It just kind of went, went parallel. The matrix and the Maitreya thing. Because before Maitreya, something else came. At least that's how it was depicted to me. It wasn't quite yet Maitreya. It was like a step, step, step to approach to be allowed and be able to receive an entity which can talk to me at all times, which can guide me, which has like an overview of everything that's going on everywhere like a GPS system uh, physically and also in the emotion and also in material things and I don't know when it all happened it's just one after another 
I do not remember how the frequency came to me, but that did. Because you, as a healer in Matrix, you have to be intuitive. You have to look what happens, what pops up. Yeah, it's like you're, you're facilitating something. You're still facilitating. Because it's, it's, you pick up something which is from one person and then you pick up the healing from the field, so to speak. And then you do something to, you know, what is necessary to bring it all together. I remember in August when I was on my first seminar, we had a few of those um, sessions with practice. A group is a little bit, yeah, a group sessions. So everyone had to kind of catch someone or someone is and do now practice. And I did that and I was now with a, I don't know, there was a few people. And someone was on the floor, a girl was laying on the floor and I was working on her. I remember these two guys came. They looked very worst in the material and they were totally impressed. The thing is, I was kind of in a trance in a way. I was like vibrating the whole thing. It was very strong. And they come and they, they said to me, wow, you're like an amazing healer. Like you really got it there. And I felt encouraged. Flattered? Yeah, maybe too. Because you feel like an asshole when you do this. You don't really know what's going on. That's the issue. You are facilitating. You have to constantly listen and, and feel into things and on and on. And then you check back with kinesiology, a lot of things, yes. But it was my first time. And they looked like they had been there for often. They knew about it. But they, they saw the field, that is the point. As a healer, you have to see the field, you have to see stuff. And that's what they saw. The impact of the energy evoked by, you know, by my presence as we were doing that, you know, exercise. I did not spoke to them again, but I met Amelie and some other guy. Uh, I don't know his name. I forgot. But they were from the Bay Area. Well, something. Closer to where I live. Let's put it this way. Now she was from Sonoma and he was... I don't know where he came from. But I saw him again in another... Oh, he came to my house with another woman. Some gay dude who was or he already had done a lot of that healing so i invite those things and she i think i'm really too because then we can sit together and practice and i can learn from them that's how i felt no i didn't learn anything from them but i felt insecure in the beginning so i wanted to practice as much as i could somehow he came to my house and brought an older woman with and she invited me to her house because that's some buddhist festival up there in up sonoma so I went to that Buddhist festival, yeah, to the stupid tea ceremony. And after that, to be in her house, and there was a group of people in her house, and, and the, yeah, this gay dude, he too. And we did a session or so, I remember. Now it was totally boring. Just another hippie life, now older, you cut off your hair, but in a way it's, I don't know, Ugh, I'm so cool and I'm Buddhist. <laughs> Oh, God, number one, Ego Devo was there. That was like a handsome Englishman. He was handsome and old. Yeah, a handsome hippie. And she was even, she looked like his grandmother in a way. Also English, by the way. That woman who came to my house. I don't know, because it's the way they part themselves in life. Where the overweightness actually does matter. And she was playing, oh, I'm so cool. Now let's all cook. Or oh, whoever was in the kitchen. Oh, let's cook now. And... Oh, I'm so cool, I have so many friends. But she showed me her house so I could look into her house and I saw her bedroom and I saw her yoga mat on the floor. And I almost broke out in tears because I saw that she was absolutely lonely. I saw it on her yoga mat or her, on her meditation mat or whatever that was. So I looked again at her and I felt that the whole thing, oh, it's not so nice here right now. <laughs> that was like one of those like, oh, I pretend I'm so happy you now. Well, I don't blame her, perceiver. Well, she was so lonely. She was also not connecting. And her and the, her husband was an ex-husband. And I thought she was a dummy that she still invited him. I better play her the role as his mother, I think she thought, than have nobody in my life. And he was some ego devo who told me that he had filmed a movie in India. No, I talked to him personally. 
I think I just had watched the movie. Or maybe I did not, but I did watch the movie right after to get to know what it was. No, it was a good movie. But it wasn't him who did it, one of those things, right? Ego Divo shit. It was kind of lamentable to see her, the woman of the house, and then her ex-husband there, the way it was all unrelated. And a bunch of shit fat ladies who now thought they were special because they also went to become Buddhist. Yeah, it's like a little badge that got on, right? Instead of other things. Boring. Amelie was a realtor agent and uh, she felt more serious. And the one who came to my house with her husband. And I, I went to see her too. Okay, so I tell you this. So then Maitreya came. And that was very painful in the very beginning. In so very many senses. I was, I was out of my mind. And I was literally out of my mind because I wasn't allowed to think anymore. I wasn't allowed to move anymore. I had to do all what Matria told me to do and I was awkward. And then he sent me to to do this. I made an appointment with Emily. I, because Emily gave healing sessions there in some healing center. No, I did respect her as a healer. She was serious. Well, people don't really believe in that because there's so much charlatan going on in the healing business, right? So she also was a realtor agent. But she had a spot in that center. So at the time, maybe I had been to Sonoma once on a trip with somebody else, but not by myself. So my train made me drive through Sonoma like an asshole for hours and hours. The, yeah, the, 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 everywhere. There's uh, streets and streets and streets and... Yeah, in the countryside, so to speak. I don't know, just like some asshole. I was driving and driving and driving and driving and driving for two hours, I think. So I arrived and then my train made me park. Oh, here you park. In some random street. I didn't even look at the GPS. I had no clue where I was. Now I walk up the street and there the other street. And boom, there is the main street. And there was the center. I had no clue. Literally, like just like that. Like I and, and like if I would be knowing that place from behind, yeah, randomly, suddenly after two hours driving like some Arsenal man, here it is. So I walked in and I looked and I was an hour late as the clock said. And as I entered to the center, now I said I have an appointment with Amelie and she smiled, the person in the entrance. And then I go in and then Amelie comes walking toward me and said, "Oh, so perfect timing! I just went out of my healing session." And that was exactly one hour late. So the time coincided. My trust sending me there at exactly the time she was free. On and on I got confirmation that that higher power, that my trail thing was, was real and, and worked. But I was out of my mind. I was crying and I was so hard. I didn't know what it was. It was just so weird. Okay, so... Let me go back before I continue with my mini. At that Matrix seminar, the first one in San Diego, Richard Bartlett, he was walking through the audience again and again to find, you know, the people he would be working with on stage. And then he walked next to me and he looked at me and then his face changed like tremendously. And then I was told later that he was told that he's going to be very important to you. But I could see it. He looked at me and something changed in his observation. No, he did not pick me. I did not want it to be picked. And it happened. I went to become very important to him. In a way. And then Richard Bartlett, he always talks about a lot of things, right? And then he does the healing and talks and talks. And then he says, and to the audience, and then I talked to myself, and, and then I made that statement. He said, I wish to help as many people as I possibly can. And after a few moments, he said it again. And then I said, I wish to help as many people as I possibly may. See, these statements are made to invite people to actually go for that. But you have to make a statement. I didn't do anything. I just heard, listen. And then he said it again. Until I took the statement and said, 
and said it to myself. That is the Bodhisattva vow. Yeah, I am a Buddhist too. So wish to have as many. Oh, okay. And that was the statement which forwarded, yeah, fostered the following events to be able to, through meditation, intense meditation, which I did and felt compelled to do, to find spaces within myself and then get the guidance that lasted a few weeks. And then my trio came, announcing I am my trio. I had not heard about it. So back to Amelie. So now I entered yeah, an hour late in her, you know, in that healing center. She had a room. So uh, I was out of my mind. So I came in and you don't have to talk in these healing sessions. There's nothing to be said because it is the healer who has to see what's going on. So she positioned me in a, in a corner with a dim light or something against the wall. And she was a little bit far away, sitting down and looking at me now, looking at the field. Okay, uh, go back again. I had met some guy, Esgar, who said he was a healer. He would receive people in his house. He had a wife and kids. He would receive people in his bedroom, actually. Yeah, you had to sit uh, on the chair and he would sit on the bed and he would tell you stuff. Or was it the opposite? No, that's the way it was. And then he would um, tell you stuff about yourself and he would write it all down. He had a large stack of colorful paper, different colors. Valtra told me about it. And it all came out exactly as it is, with her and with me too. But he kind of understood that he had to kind of hold on to me. In order to go to his house, there was not an fancy spot at all. There is a living room and in the living room you have to sit and wait and then there is a little uh, alt altar. Yeah, Mexicans have those. They have a little bit of flowers and maybe incense. And there is a little plate. And they ask you to put the money there. Because no one takes money from you. Just put the money there. And in the living room, well, I took a spot. And as I was sitting on the spot with both feet on the ground, my body started to vibrate. Up and down, up and down, up and down. That was so impressive. So I looked down and I noticed that that spot had been the one spot very used in that living room. I could, I don't know, it was a used spot. He told me that it was a, a prepared room, that's how they say, a prepared spot, energy spot. But I felt it, I didn't even know. So he understood that he had to kind of hold on to me for a while. So he asked me to come back. And then he set me on the bedroom and he stood on the, on the chair with a dim light and he asked me, what do you see? Well, I did saw his head like a lion. Not exactly like an animal, but like a lion in a way. And that's what he said. Did you saw I'm a lion? <laughs> well, he was also a little bit stupid and weird. I don't know if he just projected that onto or not, but I had to look and to see. Oh, what I can see right now, I, I think emanated from all these little steps. So back to Amelie, in that healing center in Sonoma. So she set me in the corner or against the wall, in dim light, and she sat a little bit far away and looked. Because you have to look with your eyes, but also with your inner vision. And then she said, I see a cross, I see Christ. So I'm a 